mixing up over there. We are making up a batch of silicone, platinum silicone. It's uh, basically the same type of stuff, they, similar to stuff they put inside a pair of tits or silicone sealer, sort of in between. But it's called a platinum cure because of its hardness. Its short hardness is very, very soft and similar to, uh, similar to flesh in a way. Not really fatty flesh, but it has a very soft uh, surface and pliability. And we make this stuff, you only have about six minutes to make something with it before it becomes more harmless. Yeah, before it becomes unusable at that point. So we're just gonna make a quick little wound gash thing here and do. It's not really a whole zombie effect per se. We're just gonna put on some gooey shit all over his face and make it look like he has one nasty uh, open uh, wound. That's sort of the goal here. We put the stuff on it, I don't really don't have to be too precise with it during this first couple steps here. The main thing is um, making sure that your edges look good. You know, with the silicone, you always want to work from your darker out more than works best because it has a semi translucent quality to it. So it's unlike um, what you'll find in uh, things like Layla. Let's take some has some. Uh, Transparency to it too, but it's not quite the same as what you'll find with this. So on these smaller things that you do, are you uh, are you ever able to reuse um, the makeup again? Uh, like does it, does it stand as a prosthetic and on its own it can be reapplied later? Or yeah. Is it, yeah. Yeah, it does. In most cases, it does. It's, it's uh, reusable. It peels off. Then you have a rubber appliance that can be put back on. And normally, when I do that and I, I put the stuff back on, I normally use a um, just another batch of silicone because. The old batch and the new batch will actually adhere to each other. This kind of adds to the appliance. Um, or you can use like a, an adhesive, like a silicone adhesive. Um, I typically use additional silicone, but these things work pretty well. So this one here is predominantly to be a little bit you know, closer to David's color. I probably got this batch a little bit dark. That's where the beauty of working with silicone comes in. It's pretty much just going to kind of blend in with a little bit. And if I took the time to do all the different makeup uh, blending, then the, the initial tone is the single most important thing in the world. You just want it to be you know, as close to your subject as possible, but it's not like the whole thing is screwed up if, if, it, doesn't, uh, if it doesn't work, if it's not you know, the same exact same tone. You guys can see this is a little bit darker than what I you know, would have wanted to go with on this. Too, is you use the under part here, this purple you see already still sticking out. I have to go and uh, kind of use that to my advantage because the darker silicone that got too dark here is actually going to uh, show the pink through at the bottom and it helps give you a little bit better of a, of a blend. Let's push these edges out a little closer.
can see here, it's starting to set up some. And that means as, it's, as it goes through its life cycle, silicones begins to set and harden and gets a little tackier. And when that starts to happen, we go and start to do more little details. That's that little scary metal thing. So I'd recommend you use your subject's head and a hand rest. And don't ask them or tell them they're going to do it either. That's what I'm going to do. Can you throw the handbook? It's in the book for aesthetic. It's a handbook. So with the silicone, can you apply like a, you know, like traditional powdered beauty makeup over the silicone? No, it, the plus sides of silicone are many, but one of the one of the few downsides it has is definitely how you cover and mask what you work with. It's a pain in the ass. Um, most makeups, beauty products, any anything like your, you know, standard foundations, your cream makeups, anything touches the stuff, and it it gives you a completely different texture or appearance. It cakes up inside the little crevices of the uh, silicone surface itself and then it gives a, it basically it's a tattletale. It gives away the fact that all this here isn't blended, that it's not real skin at that point. The beauty of it is, is uh, you can see through the skin underneath. That's what helps hide it. I mean, there's silicone all over his head now, but all this is clear. You yeah. can't see anything below that. And that's where it's good, but the downside is painting it. It needs to be painted with in my experience, uh, uh, additional silicone, like colored silicone, use some kind of rough real uh, finger painting, um, or use uh, skin illustrator, any sort of alcohol activated uh, based makeup will work. Um, but again, they're a little tricky to work with as they don't, they're not like your normal consistency of makeup. It's kind of a watercolory type of um, application. That's pretty much all we do on that part. It's actually ready for this to set up. So I'm going to blend in the edges a little bit with a little sponge with like a skin type texture thing on it. And this is just to kind of break up the flatness here where it's all kind of flat because then I've got silicone in places I probably would rather not have. So this gives a little bit, a little bit of a pore texture and it like breaks up the flatness. It gives away the fact that you have a, a silicone craft smear over your face. Even when we don't hear them, I definitely try to cover that. Normally what we do at this point is wait for this to completely uh, set up and 
since it's heat activated, it normally goes pretty quick, but run past the corners and start throwing on just uh, the, the main cloth socket off of Skin Elevator. So, spray this really awesome stuff. You got to meet this guy. It's made by Kenny Meyer. Freaking awesome. He designed nice. the makeup, worked on a bunch of stuff. Um, he designed the makeup, so now he's a big fan of silicone. This is what they're primarily made to be used with. That's just going in and darkening up the details in most cases. I and mean, you can go out like just with that and people are pretty happy you throw some blood on there. And you got a pretty realistic, convincing, you know, wound. And you can go layer over layer and make this as deep and nasty as you want to. You can just keep adding it on there and thicken up the edges more and more if you choose. But we're just doing a very, very quick thing here. I mean, the main reason you do this is to give it depth so that uh, you get the illusion that this is going further into David's head. So I would start with the darker places first and then work my way out from there. Some of this isn't working out so well because we're rushing through it again. You always want to let your silicone set normally before you start throwing this fun crap on there. And I would just normally go in and blend more, but really that's, that's all you need to get a, a decent uh, wound. Blood paste. 
this. I think that's a, a traditional Filipino dish my in-laws make. <laughs> So you make a nasty one with some more Give a big happy smile. Think about motorboats, man. You know how to get this guy fucking excited. <laughs> <laughs> Think about motorboats and handguns. 